Susie's just a regular gal with an irregular gift. When she has sex, she stops time. One day she meets John, and it turns out he has the same ability. And sooner or later, they get around to using their gifts to do what we'd all do, rob a couple banks. <laughs> that is Sex Criminals Volume 1, and this is the Comic Book Kaiju Podcast, Attack the Stack. I'm here with my good friend and co-host of the Technological Podcast, Captain Shaw. Joining me in the quiet today, Shaw. How you doing? <laughs> uh, it's not the quiet. It's Come World. <laughs> <laughs> Spoilers. <And laughs> this episode is going to be explicit, everybody. It sure we're is. We're talking about <laughs> Sex Criminals by Matt Fraction and Chip Zadarsky. Now, yes. Shaw, I want to get right into this because when I first met you, one of the first comics you told me that you were reading was Sex Criminals. So I wanted <laughs> what a terrible, to get... <laughs> What a terrible first impression. No, that's a good hey. thing, Shaw. <laughs> hey, this is a new person in my life. What are you reading? I'm reading about sex yes. and crime and people <laughs> who do crime after sex. Yeah. So I wanted to get your experience. How did you come across this book? How did you discover it? And what was your experience with it? Uh, good question. Okay, so... Um, we were visiting the Pacific Northwest this before uh, I moved out to Washington where I am now, but, um, we were visiting and we were in the like Pike's place market area uh, yes. um, where they have all the, like the fish markets and everything. And there was, I had done some research and there was a comic book shop like buried deep beneath the market. And it was like several floors down, really hard to find, really hard to get to, but they had some incredible uh, books there. And while I was visiting the Pacific Northwest, because we were looking for places to live, um, I was like, I need to find like good comic book stores. And because I really would, didn't have a great comic book store in Northern Colorado where we were living before. And I found this book, this bookstore went in there and it had everything. They had amazing like memorabilia, merchandise. They had movie scripts as well as uh, trade paperbacks, issues, back issues, you name it. It was pretty incredible. Um, and lots of stuff that was rated too. So it, it, it like was crisp condition issues that were like very, very valuable. Nice. Um, but I, I was looking for unique books that were not Marvel, were not DC, something more indie, something different. Um, because at that moment I felt like a little bit of superhero comic book fatigue and I wanted mm. something different. And I, the title was enough for me. I didn't know anything at the time about Chip Zdarsky or Matt Fraction. I know a lot more about them now after reading a bunch more, but, um, and thanks to Vactor, of course, because he's, heavily guided my path uh towards what books to read um but sex criminals stood out to me as like a and i i got the first volume on trade paperback and um <laughs> and i remember reading it of all places when i first started reading this i was in the tub i was taking a bath i was i was sitting down i was relaxing in a nice uh epsom salt bath just just uh, 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 soothing my weary bones and uh, enjoying some some uh, sex criminals, which was ironic because the first few pages <laughs> is about how she first learns that she can freeze time after she has an orgasm. And that's because she was in the tub and having the water uh, uh, basically splash down on her lady parts. So um, I, <laughs> I was like, this book is for me. This is amazing. <laughs> So, yeah, excellent. I had uh, kind of a similar experience where I was looking for new books to read. And this actually came out in September of 2013. And I remember reading the first issue and saying, I love this comic and then just never going back to it. So <laughs> you actually got me Shaf, to get back into it nine years later, um, because actually when my when I first met my wife, I was trying to get her to read comic books and I was trying to recommend things that were not superhero based. Sure. And so fables was one there was, I think sex criminals was one of them, but that's always one that it came to the top of my head. And I said, this would be a <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> this would be a recommendation <laughs> that I could give somebody and say, look, comic books are not just superhero based. So, and I had been a fan of Matt fraction. This was my introduction to Chip Zdarsky and he was just the artist on the book. But I wonder, reading it now, now that I know way more about yeah. Chip Zdarsky, the writer, I wonder how much of the jokes are both of them combined. Because Matt Fraction is not known as a 
com- comedic writer, and whereas Chip Zdarsky is. So that is such a great point. Such a, a lot great of the point. Humor. In fact, uh, we spoke about this beforehand, but it's worth mentioning on the pod. Um, when I finished this, I didn't even realize that it was a dual like authorship, I guess mm-hmm. you could say, um, that I-, I assumed it was Zadarsky all the way. It ha- oh. it sounded like Zadarsky. Like yeah. when f- I f- realized Fraction was part of it, I had read like the Hawkeye Fraction series. Yes, like I yes, knew that yes, much yes. Um, and I knew his style a little bit, but. I had read more Zadarsky and I was like, this is, I mean, there's no way that he didn't have a say in this. He absolutely, yes, yes. It's, it's got his voice written all over it. Yeah. And I was just, like I said, enamored by that first issue. And I don't know why I didn't finish it out. There's actually 31 issues total. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're going by the trade paperbacks, that's six trade paperbacks. So I will definitely be continuing my journey with sex criminals. You know, Chip Zadarsky He's got a cartoony art style, and that's not my favorite art style. I, so, you know, I like it in bits and pieces and, and True. spurts, but there's something about his art style, this cartooniness that is endearing. And right now he's doing public domain and he's doing everything on that. He's writing and he's illustrating it. Mm. And you can see a lot of the similarities for his art style. But he's not the first one that I would pick to say, oh, yeah, this is my favorite artist necessarily. I like him more as a writer. But this first volume in particular, I think, is is a great introduction to the world of sex criminals and Mm-mm. how their powers work. These two lovebirds connecting with each other. And then um, it only goes off the rails from here. I'll say I won't spoil anything about the next volume, but <laughs> – the relationship between the two is pretty much all uphill in this first volume. So they've only got, you know, down to go from here. So I, it's won a numerous Eisner awards There's, it's been nominated for best ongoing series. And there was actually a deal with fraction to do a sex criminals TV show at universal. Right. Yeah. So this was back in 2015. Yeah. But we haven't, it's now 2022. We haven't seen anything come about that so i doubt that's ever going to see the light of day but i would have probably would have liked to see some type of live live action adaptation of this just the idea is really great (laughs) can you imagine though i mean this this seems like a show that could only work on like hbo or something stars where you don't have to hold back on what is going to be some wild graphic nudity um (laughs) and, and themes i mean you can't just have this popping up on nbc you know it's not yeah right happen yeah. right after family matters <laughs> you know it's like whatever yeah um i i read an article uh where robert kirkman was being interviewed and he was talking about uh comic books that don't currently have like a tv show or a film or whatever based on them that he would love to to take and make into a tv show and this was definitely one of them i think it was one of the first ones he talked about he said i mean when i was reading sex criminals for the first time i was like man this is brilliant i would love to make a fantastic tv show there's stuff in that that i read where i'm just like oh this is all there so um what i think he'd be a great uh person to be like the showrunner uh, right. for something like this that'd be an awesome choice yeah i definitely like to check that out there was actually a special issue that came out called sexual Gary special in (laughs) September of 2020 and the last paperback released in November of 2020. There's three hardcovers, which um, came out July of 2021. If you want to check out all of these, I think Shoff and I give it a recommend. Um, Shoff, are you a fan of Sex? Chip, yes. Well, that too. <laughs> the Chip Criminals? Zdarsky. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Robbing Banks. Um, are you a fan of Chip Zdarsky's art style? I never asked you that before. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, honestly, um, it, it wasn't until the end of the book that that sort of dawned on me because I just assumed that they were both listed as authors. It really didn't like click until the end of the book because the uh, the collected volume uh, volume one, which is called One Weird Trick. Uh, it, it has a bunch of pages at the end which show his process of how he like layered um, some of the shots together. Like for a lot of uh, Zdarsky's work, he says that from his for his background images, he actually takes legit photographs and sort of 
in a sense, traces over the skyline if he wants to create create a certain uh, look for that. And then he takes it from there and adds the characters and, and this or that. So and that definitely reads true. Um, so he, a lot of the locations are inspired or literal from uh, areas that he's been to and traveled to. So uh, I thought that was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, his art style works for me. I, I, I think I like him better as a writer more than anything else. Um, mm. But I, I wanted to make a quick note. You were yes. talking about the uh, hardcover collections and uh, the first hardcover released, which is a collection of one through 10. So it's basically the first two volumes combined. Uh, it was released on March 2015. It was called Big Hard Sex Criminals because <laughs> it was a hardcover release a and a bigger version. <laughs> That's so big. And hard. Shaw, if anybody knows Shaw, he is a <laughs> glutton for sexual puns. So this, oh, yeah. I thought this book was right up Shaw's alley when I first <laughs> it heard totally, that he totally. Was reading. But according to the American Library Association, the hardcover release, Big Hard Sex Criminals, was the seventh most banned and challenged book in the United States due to being sexually explicit. So, And I think, Shaf, you and I have a similar view on explicit content. I think in the right context, it definitely can be used. It's, it's a part of life. It's something that everyone well, hopefully everyone has experienced and it shouldn't be shied away from. It shouldn't be something that we are banning and not letting out into the world. It, it's that's just a part of human, you know, being right. being human, I think, is um, something that we should we should strive for. And actually, my favorite writer, Brian K. Vaughn, is currently doing a book over at Substack called Spectators. And he specifically is doing that book. For that purpose where he's saying there's going to be nudity, there's going to be adult content, and I want that to be yeah. something that we're able to talk about and we're able to express as art. So well, I'm always in that camp. I think he's already successfully done that with Saga. Yeah, um, yes, yes. In a big way, because Saga does not shy from anything graphic, whether it's yes. violence or nudity and sex. So um and the artwork is amazing on that. Um, I can't, I'm blinking on the, the woman's name who does the artwork, but uh, Fiona Staples. Thank you, Fiona Staples. Uh, but, uh, uh, I mean, he's, he's no stranger to that. So that's, that's awesome. Yes. Um, I had a funny <laughs> question for you. So, yes. um, in the book, within like the first few pages, um, a lot of this, the protagonist is this girl, um, Susie, I think is her name. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, and she realizes that she can do this, but, she uh, thinks that everyone can um, initially because she's a kid. She doesn't know any better. She's like a teenager just like discovering herself and her sexuality. And so she, she wants answers. She wants to know like, hey, what what is this move? What is that move? And she talks to like the the cool girls or the rebels of the school and basically gets pulled into a bathroom stall with this like uh teenage girl who's like smoking or whatever and and she's writing on the bathroom stall wall of like images of positions and what they're called and there were so many really 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 funny positions uh that i had <laughs> never heard before in my life and i know that they this were they were just throwing out stuff you know like like of course we all laugh like rusty trombone or dirty sanchez <laughs> or some crazy stuff like that but this gets nuts and uh i wanted to throw out a couple of them uh and i wanted to see if you had any favorites uh as you were reading <laughs> so if a guy is putting his thing between her boobs it's called blooming apparently <laughs> um this and by the way this feels like pure zadarsky like all of these <laughs> things feel like 100% uh, th 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 there's a move called the three second rule taco but there's no picture for it so use your imagination on that one there's one where <laughs> there's one where she's on she's on her knees sticking reese's pieces up his butt <laughs> while he is doing his thing to himself and it's called the et the sex move um there's the chocolate Chocolate McKitten, which is where they're both acting like kittens with their butts facing each other and pooping. Um, uh, it, it just gets crazier and crazier. There's one where he sticks his thing but in her hair and he, it's called brimping. Yes. Um, it, which there's one that, where she's go ahead. Would that 
actually uh, gained a cult following, and the fans of this book referred to themselves as Brimpers. I did not know that until today. <laughs> and then at the end of the book, after you finish, there's a listing of Matt and Chip's ultimate sex moves. And it says our master list of what did and didn't make the cut on the washroom stall. And I want to throw out a few of these. Uh, there is the self-service gas station, uh, <laughs> the um, butt tunneling, <laughs> quisping, ball rogging, um they're they're all over let's see uh (laughs) (laughs) turtle suiting the candle in the wind (laughs) (laughs) the swift gary and the tip top cheerio are just a few um kegel tapping that's another good one primping cleafing gosling shrimping (laughs) i'm gonna go with the candle in the wind show candle in the wind i like that i like that <laughs> oh man, there's so many good ones. I'm gonna yeah. go with um I'm gonna go with butt tunneling. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, this is right up Shaw's alley. Oh my gosh, this was so fun. I, I I did not read volume two yet, but you you know I'm gun stuff. I'm yeah, guns to read it. This is also a good one where it's like there's only 30 issues, so it's not like the walking dead, you know, a hundred and something issues. It's 30 issues. You're in and you're out. They tell the story they want to tell and it's over. So I will also be continuing as it goes on. I was looking at my Amazon list. Apparently I bought every volume in May of this year. I, d- I don't what? have any memory of doing this. Well, good. Now you don't have to uh, purchase them again. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> this will definitely be one that I will continue with. Shoff will continue with. And perhaps dear listener, dear reader, you will check out Sex Criminals Volume 1. Let us know what you think in the comments down below here on YouTube. Or if you're watching on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, give us a five-star review and let us know what you thought about Sex Criminals. 